United fan will know exactly what I mean, especially when you uh, read the Sunday newspapers, because Newcastle had beaten Aston Villa 3-0. And they were top of the first division for the first time since 1950. Now, I don't want to be unkind, but a mate of mine said to me the other day, how do you tell the difference between a Newcastle fan and a Borough fan? Borough fans start reading the Sunday papers from the front. David Burton reports at St James's. Villa manager Graham Turner had singled out Chris Waddle and Peter Beardsley as Newcastle's danger men. And this fine run from Beardsley in a goalless first half should have given ample warning to the visitors' defence. The second biggest crowd of the day had only to wait till three minutes after the interval before Beardsley, told by manager Jack Charlton at half-time to drop slightly deeper, set up United's first. Having robbed Colin Gibson, Beardsley swapped passes with Neil McDonald, then Kenny Wharton, before finding Chris Waddle via a deflection off Villa's Steve McMahon. With no challenge from Villa fullback Gary Williams, Waddle had time and space to shoot past the unsighted Mervyn Day. The goal would surely have been a tonic for Waddle's father, who was lying in hospital with a suspected stroke. The Villa players were on a £500 win bonus, and Mark Walters had a great chance to cash in, but keeper Kevin Carr was in a mean mood. A sweeping move led to United second. Waddle sold Steve Foster an outrageous dummy, Day could only parry his shot, and Beardsley took full advantage. Newcastle were on the verge of starting with a hat-trick of wins for the first time in 61 seasons, and Waddle made sure seven minutes from time with a superb goal that combined pace, skill and aggression. It made Big Jack's day. You know, I like balls that are played up in the air and behind people because I know that Chris is very strong and if he gets on them, he takes a lot of shaking off. And his third goal was a gem. I mean, it was a hump up in the air into the back. People might say it was a lucky kick. It wasn't. We worked on that sort of a thing behind back fours just to get Chris running. And it was lovely the way it happened. And Beardsley, I was saying to them after the game today, Peter's not really got his touch for the game yet. He's not playing as well as he's very capable of. But if he comes on song with Chris, you know, it's going to take some holding. Some splendid football there at St.